this is a short lesson on how to make a nice neat job of a, a lid and it's just a few simple operations and we've got a nice lid. First of all we start with our piece of tin and a cheap way of getting tin is to get the offcuts from the long run iron place or the, the wrappings from the long run iron and I get them cut 600 by 670. So we mark out on the 600 side because we're going to bend it. We mark in 70 mils from that end and 70 mils from that end. Likewise here. bend job on the, on the bender so you're lining the 670 up so we've got a right angle bend and we do the same on this side and we'll do the do the two sides two, two ends manually And that's where the secret trick comes in. Once we've got that, we're down on the ground. And we do our, our lid, which is just a, a frame with the sacking on it. In there, we want to measure around about 55 60, somewhere around pretty close handy. That should be about right. And this is where it gets reasonably awkward on the knees start from the middle with the head. and then I put a longer nail in the corner and that goes into the wood Here we go, it's just a panel bedding dolly that you put on the head of the nail and bend the nail over. We do the same to the other side. It's skewed on an angle and it holds the joint together and it holds your tin on. This is the interesting bit. We get our tin snips and then we cut into the corner on the flap and so and likewise on this side the 
you got that. We got a couple of V cuts in there, and then we bend this one back, and it tears the tears the corner away. And then we fold it in, making sure that that goes on the underneath. Tap it down with a hammer. And the thing in this corner. And this is the noisy bit. Put it on the floor. Now you can can actually use a piece of ply so you've got a bit there to grab the tin. You just got to move that up a wee bit and you can put a nail in your corner here. Put it fairly close to the corner because that's the that's a bit that after a while becomes uh, a wee bit proud and it can catch on the, on the next hive. So we bend that up as much as we can and then we get our manual bender which is like that. Put that along there. Eventually it submits. And then the corner one, I use a punch, just a sharpened pin punch. And I put a hole in there first for my nail. And I use a, whatever it is, two and a half inch nail. And that goes through the joint. Flip it over and then you just round off the corner a wee bit with a hammer. And you've got a nice cosy lid that's um, strong and durable. Now just going back to where you started, looking at the your frame initially, how many nails those boards are a bit short. Yep, but how many nails did you put in just to hold it together? Because you're actually, um, when you're putting the um, iron on, you're actually sealing and put, giving the side of the base strength, aren't you? Yeah, but I leave some of them out. This lid. When I nail it for a start, I've got two nails in here and one at the top here. Yep. So when I finish nailing it, so you've got another nail going in here. Yep. And you've got another nail going in here. So you're adding three nails to each other. I'm adding, adding, yeah, there's six nails on. Oh, one, two, three, four, five nails in that joint. And that gives it strength. Yep. Well, that's pretty good. All happy? Yep. And now, do you put anything under your roots? Um, nah. Too high for a. A what? Anything like a crown board or anything under the hive? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have a uh, a mat. Yep. But I prefer these because I use them to stack my boxes on. When you're on the ground. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those tin lids that you can get are uh, uh, different. Put two or three boxes of honey on, and they collapse. You can't use them for that. Yeah. They just they might. Be a it's the other thing is it's essential that you have a you still recording yeah it's essential that you have a nail that goes right through and you can bend it over 
My early lids, I had nails that didn't go right through and they all popped out. Yep. Now your longer nails are using decking nails? Something with a bit of uh, thread on it so it holds in or just no. straight? Just straight. Uh, just straight galvanised. Flat edge, yep. 60 by 2.8, yep. 40 by 2.5. And it just go into the corner. Now, in treating your lid, do you treat these lids or what have you made them? Yes. So I cut them out and then I do all my, all my woodwork, do my joints, and then send it all away to get treated. So it's what sort of treatment? H3. Because there's no contact with bees, so it doesn't really matter what well, you treat it to. And there's contact with bees, but I paint them. But you just bend it back like that, that tears, right along that line. Got it? That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. Um, and this has a tip for bottom boards. I machine all up, machine my bottom boards, and just depending on how I feel, I cut it. I cut everything with one or two grew, two um, checks on it, so that they fit together. But I just go through and, and cut all my timber, um, buzz it, take my check out. I might take the check out two sides. I like to put a, a knotty piece in the middle rather than on the edge, and I don't care what what size they end up. And what do you take it? What do you take it? As long as I've got one straight side, and then I start by nailing it up, and I start with a, a decent board and start flat on one side, nail it up as so. These are all random sizes, and then when I'm um, wanting to take it to size, I run it through the saw bench at 406 millimeters, and I whip that that off. And that does for my risers. Yep. Okay, and what about the back? If you're ever lifting from the back of the hive, do you ever leave a little bit left over the, from the back or you just flush it? That's that's the front of the hive. Yep. yep. That's the back. So it's flush. Yep. Yep. And the the box the weight of the box is distributed on the runner. Yep. Some people have the runner right at the front, but you know, you most of your weight is on on only part of your runner. Yeah. And that's that's gonna give me two off cuts there that I'll get risers out of. This other, other one here because I use random sizes, you know, random widths, I've got a lot more off cut. And you try and work it so that you you know your knotty pieces when you're not cutting. Yeah. And yeah it works pretty good like that. Um, I, I prefer to use bottom boards with the sideways um, right. access for a um, trolley. trolley and I just use warehouse trolleys and put some extension legs on them and this one there just a warehouse trolley, a couple of extension legs just so that it gets over the point of balance but when you go into the hive you can just right. and you use a tailgate lifter so it works quite really yep. well yep the thing with the warehouse trolleys is that you um, run into problems with the bearings and you can't get bearings the same size as the chinese bearings and um, the decent skf bearings you can get a wee bit smaller and you just turn your shaft down you take, take about a mil off the shaft and those bearings are about oh, I don't know, they're about nine or ten dollars or something. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Roger. Fine. Tip of the month. <laughs> <laughs> There's a finished bottom board where you get the old cheapo recycled paint and 
and just give it a coat of paint or a couple of coats of paint and it's hunky dory probably the reason why I haven't taken that one out is because it needs a wee bit of tin over the hole on the bottom otherwise you've got a ventilated bottom board <laughs> your mouse hole actually <laughs> the main thing with, with bottom boards is you have dry timber if you get wet timber it'll shrink and all your gaps these checks will actually be uh, gaps and your bees will be able to go straight through them so you've weathered that for how long? <laughs> oh probably a year yep, so you've like it's been treated and it's treated, full of, yeah. filleted no I just block stack it you just block stack it yep. yeah and it sits there for about a year oh, and then I use it of course this is um, South Canterbury so uh, it gets fairly dry yeah yeah Oh, well, it might take longer than the year too. I just cut them out, whack them up. And yep. Lasts me for a few years. All right. Okie dokie. So, 